Looks like everybody's here. Hello to everybody. Sorry about being a little bit late today. I had a couple of had a couple of guys on phone calls there. So, all righty. Uh, a little bit late today. Apologize again. I see everybody that's normally here. Aaron Wilson, Goose is here. Goose is a good American. Uh, there we go. Um, Adam says, I need to tell you that I am back. I'm sorry that I have been a little bit inconsistent here lately. Um, but, you know, here's a new year, and here we go with the, the all the new stuff that we're going to do that. But uh, thanks to Jimmy for wrapping in or setting in for me last week. Um, we, uh, again, uh, 2017, we want to say thanks to everybody for a great year. We had a, a record month in November, and, and December was huge too. So uh, thank you guys for that. I'm going to be giving away a Diesel Tips t-shirt today. So uh, best comment wins a Diesel Tips t-shirt. Uh, working on uh, 674 in the, in the uh, Power Stroke in the shop this week, doing some twin turbos, some twin fueler uh, kits. So be looking for those videos coming up here pretty soon. And there we go. Um, so yeah, let's get started with your questions if anybody's got one yet it uh weather's broke here in kentucky we've had some pretty good uh we've had some pretty good weather now and hello joe martin uh howdy how are you sir uh we've got some pretty good weather so but snow's coming again or ice or some crap i hope it's not ice because the ice is awful i'd rather have uh two foot of snow than half an inch of ice it's the ice is a terrible deal terrible deal breaks trees, tears everything up. So, um, Dylan Pritchard just joined the, the, the podcast here. Dylan is a good, good American. He just had a surgery day. So everybody wish Dylan well. Dylan's one of our sales guys. He, uh, had a little operation day. So there we are. Um, what's been going on? Got our new diesel tech that came in yesterday. Been reading on that. Uh, just basically been out in the shop the last few days. So, uh, kind of back up to my old tricks and um, yeah that's it we uh, we've got some sales coming up this week um, that we are going to be working on our GB injector sale is actually going to be extended out our six seven injectors from GB uh, we're gonna run those for another couple of months um, we're gonna be starting on working on some weekly sales that Adam's gonna have up uh, pretty soon so uh, there you go Joe's got a question Colin Rainey just joined Colin's a good American he taught me that Willie Nelson's guitar's name is Trigger so what are your thoughts on extended oil chains intervals 10 to 15,000 miles and reusable filters um, well Joe I'll be honest with you uh, I don't know why the reusable filters like the uh, I can't think of the brand that see all the time chub or whatever that whatever the things are um you know as far as the micron rating of the filtration uh it should work uh, you know I, i've never had one on a vehicle that i personally own uh 10 to 15 thousand mile range on today's oil they say that that's totally a, a a real thing i guess you know that you can put all the science behind it that you want but everything i've ever driven in my life that's had a diesel motor in it, and i drove it five thousand miles if it was light duty and i changed the oil and filter in it and i've never had a uh bearing failure or a turbo or a oil contamination issue um on that so i'm going to keep doing that um as long as i can afford to do it i guess um per se so yeah uh, Brandon it just joined us. Brandon is a, is a good American. Adam Craig joined. He is a good American. Anthony Kreft has got a question. So 0173 hard start at 15 degrees and below when plugged in all night. Injector or glow plug issue. Runs fine after it fires. Fresh oil change. Um, could be a couple of different things on there. Anthony, do you know if you're getting power to your glow plugs um, and your intake air heater, uh, relay as well. So first thing you want to do is find your two relays for your intake air heater and your glow plugs. Check them to see if you've got constant power to them. If you've got constant power to them, uh, go inside the truck, have someone go inside the truck and turn the key on. 
uh, wait to start light comes on you want to check the other side of the post of the relay to see if you're getting fire out to those two components the intake air heater and the glow plugs um, a lot of people take the intake air heater for granted it's not going to be make or break there's much more uh, thermal advantage that you're going to get from the glow plugs with a 7.3 but I would just definitely check to make sure that you're getting power to those things uh, and then power out to them uh, power out to the glow plug intake heater as well so that's that's step one for you sir uh, Greg Jenkins best fuel and oil additive for a 6.0 uh, Greg I've heard uh, good things about most everything that's on the market hot shot secret uh, rev X uh, anything that helps you with stiction uh, is a good oil additive so Dave Hyden says what's good oil to use um, you know Everything that I've ever been around on the farm uh, has been, we've run Rotella in, so never seen a problem out of Rotella. Uh, I run Dello in, in my trucks because I, that's what I've always used. Again, that's another thing that, you know, so an old trucker told me, hey, I only use Dello. Uh, so I said, you know what, I'm gonna use Dello. Uh, and that's what I did, and I've never had a problem with either Dello or Rotella, so I don't know. There's my cell phone ring, and it's my wife. She's calling. We'll call her back. Ellie, love you. Uh, Dave Hayden, what's a good oil to use? Got that one. Jeremy Combs, Harry Chess contest winner here. Jeremy, yes, you are. And thank you for your participation in that. That is Adam's absolute favorite event. Uh, he loves to do that. So um, the Dirty Diana update. We're going to talk about what's going on with our pulling truck right now. Wes McFarland joins. So did Josh Wesley. Josh Wesley is a good American. Wes McFarland is not a good American. He is indeed a uh terrorist so dirty diana we have the rear end back in the truck and it is facing the right direction uh we have got the uh plates our new uh sales guy events cut out the plates they're going to hold it up um so we should have uh ready to go to get it off lift here pretty soon hopefully motor running maybe next week or something like that um uh, the i was talking about working on the six seven power stroke right now uh we've got a video coming uh real soon on how to pull a turbo on those trucks so should be a real a real good thing uh my white duramax i'm actually working on it i've got cp3 out of it sent it off for testing uh i'm going to be pulling the tank this weekend uh checking for uh fuel contamination all kinds of crap and blah 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 and there you are uh sec football championship we're going to talk about that for just a minute i was 100 percent on georgia's side uh because of the sec east but they uh, blew it and alabama came away the victor and i uh i mean what do you say uh, there's not a lot that you can say. It was a hell of a ball game. I will say that for sure. I I, I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of the ball game. Uh, yes, Goose, you know you you know exactly. Jordan Askew says difference in a 366 and a 369 SXE. It depends on the housings, Jordan. Uh, but a 66 mil is a is a uh, 66 uh, on the front side. Gosh, I'm lost my uh, mind day and a three or a 69 60 uh, 69 on the front side uh, both both of them probably going to be t3 foot turbo so uh, a couple of different um, uh, there are a couple of different ways that those turbos can be configured uh, so don't just get hung up on s366 or s369 but yes sxe is is the uh, the new borg um, the new board classification so good stuff uh Kiefer says would you recommend 5w40 up here northern minnesota where it's been around 40 below on or off keep running 1540 5w40 is going to be a lower viscosity oil i guess for you so you're probably going to have a little bit better uh speed on crank up so Kiefer, yeah i would say you probably be better off to run go that way uh bubba bodifer says hello hello bubba bubba's good american chris hartzell do you have recommendation for a dpf delete tuner i bought a 2012 ramp 3500 was not told it had a delete on till after um chris i'm going to assume that the tuner is probably still in the truck uh, you've got a couple of different ways that you can go. We try not to talk about those things here on the uh, call-in show. Um, so you're more than welcome to give us a call and we'll talk to you about it and see what we can do to help you. Uh, I have a 2007.3 looking for recommendations for injectors. Uh, Linden Stackhouse. Linden, it depends on what you want to do with your truck and what your goals are. Um, if you're not looking for all-out horsepower, uh, I would suggest to go ahead and stay with a stock injector. 
Uh, if you want a little bit of a performance horsepower gain, then at that point you would probably want to do a tuner or something of that nature to uh, just kick the truck up, uh, wake it up just a little bit, get you a little bit better fuel mileage, a little bit better fuel, uh, pulling power. Um, to go into a performance injector, that's great. We sell uh, a hybrid injector that's not going to overwhelm your stock oil system. We can put you in a hybrid. Um, but the thing with it, that is, is uh, you're going to want to make sure that you've got enough air to support that or enough turbo to support that. So uh, a couple of different things there. We can definitely walk you through it. But if you're not wanting to go with a huge horsepower number for the truck, or if you're not that worried about horsepower, you can probably gain it through tuning. Uh, and if you're needing to rec if you're needing to replace your injectors, go ahead and stay with your stock. So uh, Bill Foster said, hello, what's a good injector to go with on a 0460 strictly my everyday work truck to haul a boat four times a year? Thanks, love the show. Bill, thank you for the kind words. We appreciate that. Um, you know, lots of different brands of the injectors out there for the, uh, for the 60 trucks. You know, here's what you look for in a in an injector. You're going to want to um, get a new spool valve in these injectors, and you're going to want to have a new nozzle and as many upgrades to the body of the injector as you possibly, possibly can get. So those three things right there, those are just three good things to look for. Spool, body, uh, modif or, uh, body updates, and... Uh, new nozzles on the injectors uh, at that point then you're looking for who's got the best warranty uh, there are a lot of different injectors on the market I don't have a necessarily a favorite everything that we carry on thoroughbred diesels website if I had a 6.0 truck they're all injectors that I would go with in my truck so uh, definitely check out the offerings that we have anything that you see on our page is going to be a definitely is going to be a good option for you I don't suggest that if you, with what you're doing with your truck, you're probably not going to need to go with a, uh, a performance injector. Stock's probably going to be just fine for you. Um, uh, Chris, you're very welcome. Uh, Juan says, I have an LBZ with 50% over injectors. EGR delete and EFI truck falls on its face under acceleration. Just smoke. Uh, Juan, I assume that you've probably got a lift pump on the truck. Uh, the 50% over injectors. I'd like to see, uh, you know, how many miles you've got on the truck because that'll tell me what the, uh, uh, what your, um, what the status of your CP3 is. Uh, your cascade valve as well, or your, uh, do you have a race valve in the truck? I'd like to know that. So, um, there you go. Jody French. Jody French is a great American. Jody, I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, you ever get back to Winchester, man, come back to see me. Uh, John Winters, 2007.3 six-speed crew cab. It's a gutless turd. <laughs> I've heard that uh, since the cabin chassis trucks are detuned. Is that true? And will a TS chip wake it up? John, call us with the calibration that is on your uh, PCM. Uh, that will tell me exactly what you've got going on in the truck as far as what I can do for you tuning wise. So call me with that, John. I will do everything to I can help you. Uh, Shay Juan Ethington is here. Shay Juan is a good American. He just got his truck back. Everybody say thank you or uh, congratulations to him because he just had uh, Jaron Holder at Holder Down Diesel do a ton of work for him. Uh, he's back up and running. I know he's probably the happiest guy in the world right now. Uh, no lift, 25,000 miles, has a rail plug. Juan, start out with a lift pump first. Do that first. You're going to have to wind up. Uh, you're going to wind up having to do that for sure. Sarah, I'm getting to you. I see you right now. Brian Abergast, hello. I have a 2015 6 7. My truck dies a lot. DBF is constantly cleaning itself. What tuner would you recommend? Brian, give us a call. We'll help you out with that. No problem. Sarah, to your question. So, uh, Sarah's question for everybody is if you donate your hair to Locks of Love and the person that you donate that hair to uh, goes out and commits a crime, say murder, uh, then uh, while you're murdering someone, don't murder anybody. During that crime, one of your hairs falls out. The detectives find it. They run a DNA uh, test on it. They find that to be the person that's actually the person that donated for the locks of love. Okay, so here we go. Sarah's question is, are you at that time guilty of murder because they found your hair there, but you didn't actually, you didn't actually commit the murder? So here's my opinion on this. Number one... Um, and this is going to be purely an opinion. If you are a candidate for locks of love, I don't think that you're going to go out and commit a murder. Thank goodness. Now, 
let's just say that this is a real thing. This really did happen. They pull your hair at that point. I think that you are at that time a person of interest. Once you are called up to explain to the police where you were at the time of the said crime, I don't think that you're going to have anything that's going to get pegged to you. They're going to go back through Locke's love, find out who the hair, who the hair went to, and then them bastards are going to jail. So there you are. There's the uh, uh, there's the uh, the whole mystery unraveled, Sarah. Actually, a good question. Keep those ones coming. I like the ones about crimes. No, I really don't. So, Juan, you're very welcome, man. I think that a lift pump is the first thing you're going to do. I think you've probably got a problem inside of your CP3, but let's do a lift pump first because you're going to wind up needing it anyway. Ricky Carter just joined us. Ricky Carter is a damn good American. Thank you for being here, Ricky. Cody Wilson, my 2010 LMM just hit 300,000 miles, fully deleted with an air dog too. Do I need any special service, adjust the valves, or anything? Cody, that's a really good question. At that kind of mileage, uh, with those kind of years, you're probably on the road quite a bit. Um, the truck being run is a is a, is definitely a good thing. You know, as far as preventative maintenance stuff that you can do for the motor at this time, uh, you would probably be better serve to go ahead and maybe look at your rail pressure, uh, give and take. And that'll tell you the condition of your fuel system. Your fuel system has probably got some natural erosion that's happened inside the system. So you're probably not getting everything that you need out of your injectors and your pump. Take a look at those fuel numbers and um, that'll tell you where you need to be as far as preventive maintenance valves. No, I think you're okay. Uh, Timothy Collins ordered an AirDog 4G lift pump. GNR something from you guys. Truck feels like a different truck. It's 9924 valve. Wait for President 2020. Tim Collins, thank you. That's the first talk of me running for President 2020. If any of you all want to write me in, please do. If I win it, I promise you I will take care of everybody. No kind of bu no bullshit from my presidency. Uh, you got my word on that. Shay Wan, happy as an understatement. That's exactly right. Come see me, buddy. Uh, Brian Abergast, I'll be in touch. You're very welcome. Brian Yetsky, sorry if I messed up your last name. How long should I go on on my cat on my Duramax? Should I use a percent gauge? How long should I go on my cat on my Duramax? Should I use a percent gauge or Brian? I think you're talking about the uh, cat fuel filter. If you've done the cat uh, fuel filter conversion, uh, my suggestion on to you is this: uh, go 10,000 miles and change the filter, irregardless of what your filter percentage tells you in your DIC. Uh, change it every 10,000 miles. I promise you, you will not be sorry for doing that. That cat filter is is cheap, uh, good cheap insurance. Jimmy Colts, what's good? Wide open rail pressure on 2011 LML with CP4, uh, 28.5, 27.28.5 wide open throttle, I think. Uh, that's right. Uh, Brian, yeah, cat filler. Okay, there you go. Kevin Lafferty, I have a 27, 5.9, six speed comes, AFE intake, and five inch turbo back exhaust. What tuner would you recommend? EFI Live. Yes, Kevin. Um, EFI Live would be a very good one. Uh, MM3 from Smarty if you're wanting to uh, look for some uh, some custom tuning aspects or whatnot. Both of them would be uh, really good uh, uh, really good tuners for you. So um, I like the Smarty offering as well because you get the the readout with it with the uh, the Smarty Touch. So you can give us a call, Kevin. We'll we'll get you taken care of on it. Uh, Don Fetzer, what is recommended fuel pressure for a fast on a 9612 valve? Comes. I just bought a fast system from you yesterday. Uh, Don, it depends on what kind of a fast system you bought from us. We have some of them that work as assist pumps that actually will assist uh, the cam-driven lift pump. Uh, 45 PSI is probably where you're at with those kits. If I'm wrong on that, somebody can jump in there and tell me. Uh, but with the flow of those pumps, the 45 PSI to the 7100, if it is a standalone pump, I'm pretty sure that is the correct pressure. Um, oh, uh, one thing Adam wanted me to talk to you all about at the end of this video, and I don't know what the hell goes on here, but there is some sort of a button that goes up that says subscribe for live notifications. You all, please, if you want to see my show on Thursdays, please click the subscribe uh, for live notification buttons or whatever in the world it says. The reason being, like today, I was out in the shop working on a truck or somebody will call or there'll be a damn fire in here or something. Uh, I'm not always on here exactly at three o'clock, but I do my level best to get to this desk by in that time frame to be able to take your all's questions and try to help you the best I can. So 
Uh, that being said, if you click that button, that will get you notifications that when I'm when I'm on here, you'll know what's going on. Chris Shear joined. Uh, Chris, like Wesley, is also a terrorist, so uh, not a good American. But uh, Chris actually has a thing going on in his house with his water system for his uh, washing machine. He would like to know where the shutoff valve is for his hot and his cold water going to his washing machine. So any of you all are plumbers out there and you would like to help Chris, Chris is actually not a terrorist. He's a pretty good dude. Uh, he would like any of the help that you can give him on that. So with that being said, we're going to get off of here today. Um, the hoodie winner, uh, the hoodie winner, I'm going to give it to my turbo buddy down here that asked me about the 366 or 369 because I'll be honest with you, I didn't do a crap worth a crap job about answering your question, man, because I had another thing going on here in the office I was paying attention to and I didn't give you a very good answer between the difference between a 366 and a S369 and I apologize for that. Uh, Adam, if you will scroll back through here and find that guy, he's the one that gets the shirt today. All right, guys, everybody, thank you all for watching. We can't, help, we can't thank you enough. Uh, just uh, everybody be safe. Uh, try to be good to one another and keep your gowns down. Talk to you later.